we're in the righteous series, and how many of you are righteous? Glory to God. I said, how many are righteous? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn with me once again to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to be in verse 19. Namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling, everybody say reconciling, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing, that word imputing means counting or crediting, uh, not crediting your sins, come on somebody, not, not imputing their sins or trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So in other words, in Jesus, God was not crediting your sin to you. Come on, somebody. How, if that just, man, if that word doesn't get you fired up right there, your sin is under the blood. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Man, I mean, uh, you know, all churches don't preach that. I mean, they, they, it's kind of like some churches, they preach it's the blood plus works. The blood plus this. The blood, it's not the blood plus anything, people. Come on. Jesus paid the price. Amen. Now, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. I said be reconciled to God. Amen. Hallelujah. For he made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus had no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God <laughs> in Him. Hallelujah. So in other words, we are righteous not because of our works, lest any man should boast. We're not righteous because of anything we've done. We're righteous because of what Jesus did. Jesus paid the price for your sins. Hallelujah. Now, when Jesus went to the cross, I want you to get this so clear. This is what we're trying to get across. He paid for all. Everybody say all. All, all your sins. And we're, we're going to go over that this morning. All your sins. Glory to God. Who not crediting our sins to us, not imputing our sins to us. If you're born again, your sins have no more dominion over you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, there's none righteous, uh, uh, Pastor. There's none righteous. No, not one. Yeah, outside of Jesus. But we're not outside of Jesus. If you're born again, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, your sin is as far as the east is from the west. Your sin is put in the deepest sea to be remembered no more. You are as white as snow. Come on, hallelujah. Glory to God. That's, that's, what, that's what the blood did. And we've got to have a good understanding. Well, I'm an old sinner. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace, Pastor. I'm just, I'm just an old sinner. No. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. You are the righteousness of God. That's what it said. I'm not telling you that. That's what the Word says. You are the righteousness of God. Come on. You are the righteousness of God in Him, in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, my, my, my. Now, turn with me over here to Hebrews chapter 10. Now, Hebrews chapter 10, everybody should read that two or three times today. All right, this week. I'll give, you, I'll give you a week to do it. Hebrews chapter 10 will change your life. Hebrews chapter 10, let's just start in verse 1. For the law, having a shadow <laughs> of good things to come. Everybody say good things to come. Aren't you glad there's good things to come? Good things to come, and not of, of this very image of, of, the, of the things, um, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers th thereunto perfect. So in other words, every time by the blood of bulls and goats in the Old Testament, how many know the Day of Atonement? How many know the word atonement means to atone for or to cover? 
uh, every year they had the Day of Atonement and the blood of bulls and goats would, would be sacrificed and that blood was, was symbolically covered Israel and that blood uh, was a covering but it wasn't a perfect covering because it was once a year. Now, how many know Jesus once and for all? I'm preaching myself happy. Jesus once and for all paid it all. It is done. It's not a yearly plan. It is an eternal plan. Hallelujah. Now, a lot of pre preachers in churches, they don't preach this. They, they, they try to get you thinking, well, you know, uh, uh, you, you still, you know, you got sin. You still got sin, my goodness. Well, let's read verse 3. <laughs> but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. There is a remembrance. Uh, in other words, you, you keep remembering that, you know, uh, okay, uh, a year gone by, now I got sin again. Uh, and, and, and we got to have atonement. We got to have that day of atonement. We got to have. We got to have uh, sacrifices. And 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 my goodness, let's buy some some doves. They, they go, whatever they did in the in the temple, let's get some more together and let's make sure all this sin is covered. Hallelujah. And so that's what they did. And they just kept having year after year a sin consciousness. So let's go down here. And let, let me say this about sin consciousness. Uh, well, go, go back to verse 2. Let's, let's read that again. For then would they not have ceased to offer because that, uh, that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Should have no more conscience of sins. In other words, we're not supposed to have a sin consciousness. Are you getting this? You see, uh, well, what are we supposed to have? You're supposed to have a righteousness consciousness. You're not supposed to have a sin consciousness. You're supposed to have a right standing that you are reconciled to God consciousness. You have to have a mindset that you believe that the blood covered, not only covered, oh, we're going to get this. Mm -hmm. A sin consciousness identifies you with Adam. A righteousness consciousness identifies you with Jesus. Did you hear what I said? So when we, when we identify ourselves with Jesus and what he did, we are purged of our sins and we are washed as clean as you can be. Glory be to God. He paid the price. He reconciled us to right standing with the Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Go now down here, verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, everybody say one. One sacrifice for sins forever. Somebody going to get this. Glory to God. I mean, I already run an aisle. It says, one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of God. Done. Finished. From hereafter expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has made perfected. One offering made perfect. How many know that, that one offering of the Day of Atonement only made it for another year? But here it's perfect. One offering. Perfect. Glory to God. Forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. One offering. He has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts now, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where the remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. It's done. It's finished. Having therefore, brethren, boldness <laughs> to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, 
your sins have been remitted. And sometimes when we see these different words in the Word of God, we don't, you know, it's kind of you run right over them. It's like, okay, yeah, that's, it. that's a Bible word, you know. But how many know we need to know what all the words mean so we have a good understanding of everything that's in the book? Amen? And so uh, when it says that, that your sins are remitted, that means that they're not covered like they were by the blood in the Old Testament. You see, in the Old Testament, the word atone means to cover. And so your sins were covered by the blood in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, they are remitted. Oh, glory to God. Woo! Well, what does the word remitted mean? It means done away completely. It doesn't mean covered anymore. Yeah, the blood doesn't just cover anymore. Old Testament, it covered. And, and, and it wasn't perfect. But in Jesus, it was made perfect that it did away completely your sin. Now, I want to make this clear. Past, present, future. What does that mean? I don't need to uh, 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 ask for forgiveness. Well, first of all, the only way you can get saved is ask for forgiveness of your sins. Amen. And that's how you, you get saved. Well, what about after that when I sin? Because I know if I say I have no sin, uh, I, I'm, I'm made a liar because, uh, I'm, you know, we sin. Well, yeah. But you're not asking God or asking forgiveness of those sins for God. You're doing it for you. And, I, and I've taught on this before. You, you're not doing it for God. God already sees you as white as snow. He already sees you, I mean, made perfect. You are perfect before God. Hallelujah. Why? Because when he sees you, he sees Jesus. He sees the perfect sacrifice. You have been reconciled. I said you've been reconciled. Hallelujah. So now when we ask for forgiveness of, of something we've done, we, maybe we were angry or whatever it might be, it's for us so that we get back into right relationship. You're already in right relationship with God. You've been reconciled to God, but sometimes you come out of fellowship with God where you feel because your sin has separated you. And so now you, you for you, you have access and God is just to forgive you of all your sins. Hallelujah. And so that places you right back into right standing and that places you right back to where you can believe God for great things. Amen. Why? Because now there's no sin trying to, you know, the enemy's just the accuser. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's constantly, you know, that's why it's good if you're a sister, you don't have, you're not accused. But if the brethren are accused, no, <laughs> they're all accused. The devil is accusing everybody. He's just going around that little chihuahua. He just constantly, I mean, he just constantly, you know, and, and trying to tell you why you can't do whatever you're, you're unworthy. You're unworthy. And you know what you tell the devil? You say, devil, I'm worthy because of the blood. Not because of anything I've done, but because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whoo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> done away with it. Completely. Jesus took your punishment. Jesus took your punishment. When we get to heaven and, and we, we stand before God, it's not basing anything uh, for, the, for the believer. It, it's reward. Hallelujah. It's crowns. It, it's what you did for Him. Come on, somebody. That, that's where we'll be judged on what we've done for Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, oh, I'll tell you what, I want lots of crowns. Hallelujah. So I can put them all down back at his feet. Hallelujah. Mm. God's a good God. Well, 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 wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. If, I, if I'm driving crazy and, I, and I'm mad and I'm just angry and someone cut me off and I'm going down the freeway and I'm yelling out the door some obscenities, you know, in... in, in uh, uh, I mean, I... I, 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 I <laughs> 
and I'm going down the road and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just mad and I hit a brick wall and die. I'm going to hell, right? Because there's no... Now, you're a born-again believer, but you didn't get the chance before you hit the wall to ask for forgiveness of that sin. So you crashed into that wall and you died, and in that moment God said, you know, you lived a great life, and you lived it for me, and you were in church every Sunday. And you know, you, you, you're in the Word and you did everything, but you know, you were angry and that's sin right there. And matter of fact, you were jealous too because you thought you were supposed to be in that lane. And there was a little pride there going on because you thought, matter of fact, you, <laughs> tell you the truth, there was about 10 sins on you at the moment. So even though you led a wonderful life and you went to church every Sunday and you, and you did your best and you were in the Word, you're going to hell. You're going to hell because you forgot in that second before you crashed to ask for forgiveness. You know, church, some churches preach that kind of junk. My goodness. When Jesus went to the cross, he paid all your sins. And if you crashed into a wall and forgot to, or didn't have the chance to, to ask for forgiveness, what you did 20 minutes ago, it does not matter. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. I'm talking good news here, people. This is good news. You are the righteousness of God in Him. Not outside of Him. Now, if you're not born again, you hit that wall, you're going to hell. Now, <laughs> and you know what? We need to know that because there's a lot of people going to hell. And maybe your neighbor's going to hell. Could you imagine if your neighbor's house was on fire? and you're outside watering the lawn, and you've got a hose in your hand, but you're too busy to walk over to your neighbor and put the fire out, or at least tell them to get out of the house and save themselves. Turn with me over here to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. You know, there's so many that are going a broad path that is going to destruction. Luke chapter 15. Hallelujah. Weren't you glad when you got saved? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the most glorious thing. And you know what the most glorious thing besides getting saved is? Leading someone to the Lord. And you know how easy that is? I just made it easy for you this morning. Just give them the website. <laughs> but you know what? If you're talking to somebody, this is what you do. Tell them your testimony. Don't get into some great theological stuff. Don't get, don't get you know, and, uh, unless you're ready to go there. But just tell them your testimony. Tell them why you got saved. How you got saved. And guess what? You know that. And you know it better than anyone. And if you tell somebody your testimony, you will say it with excitement. And you will say it with passion. You will say it so much better than quoting a scripture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, when you tell somebody your testimony, you're still excited over it. Because it's the best thing that ever happened to you. And so you just share your testimony. You know, there's no need to make it long. Just tell the, tell the you know, the, the good parts. <laughs> whatever, whatever, you know, that you, you feel you want to share. But that's how you, that's how you witness. 
You don't need the four spiritual laws. You'll get to that. Well, you know, I, I need to know Romans 8, 9, you know, Romans 10, 9 and 10, and blah, blah, blah. You know, Romans Road and all this. Well, let me tell you something. That's all good. Praise God for it. But most people never get to that because they don't start with their testimony. Tell somebody your testimony. Amen? Amen. Tell somebody. You know, if you, and, and I'm not talking about somebody that's not, you know, interested. But there are a lot of people interested in your life. A lot of people. And, and some that in the past weren't interested, but now they're going through something. They don't have enough money for gas. They don't have enough money to have this. They, they, they're in a tight spot. There are all kinds of things going on. How many found Luke chapter 15? Go down here to verse 11. Hallelujah. Chapter 15 and verse 11. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that, that falls on me. In other words, my inheritance. And, and he divided it to them, his living. In other words, uh, I want it now. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey. He, he left into a far country, and there wasted his substance. Everything he had, he spent it with riotous living, not good living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want, lack. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. Now, to a Jewish person, this is the farthest you can go down. <laughs> he is working with pigs. He is working with pork. He is laying in the mud. He is with the filth. I mean, if you've ever been to a pig farm, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, and he would, he would have uh, gladly have filled his belly with the husks of that swine did he eat and no man gave to him. And when he came to himself, Everybody say, he came to himself. He said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I, I, I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned, I have sinned against heaven and before you and am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Now, this is a very, very, very good analogy here of a slave mentality or a sin consciousness. I'm not worthy. Take me in as your servant. I, 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 I sinned, I've sinned, and I, and I keep sinning, and I'm not worthy for anything. And that's how many times the devil will get you. He'll get you to a point where you think you're not worthy. You're not going to be ever used for God because there's some little thorn that keeps poking and some little sin that, that keeps on you and you never seem to overcome it. And, you, and man, here you are again. And I'm unworthy. And, I, and I, I'm not even worthy to have anything. I just hope I can have what a servant would have the... the, the the least of my father's house. Let me back in. Are you seeing that? And so he said, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not worthy to be called your son. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. How many of the father was always waiting and looking? I was waiting. My son's coming back. And had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no more worthy to be called your son. But the father, but the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring here the fatted calf and kill it. We're going to have a steak tonight. Come on, somebody. And let us eat and be merry.
For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. The father always <laughs> wants to put you right back into right standing. Not, not anything inferior, not as a servant, not as something outside the family. How many know when you were born again, you became a child of God? And this father doesn't look at his son as a servant. He still looks at his son as a son. And not only that, but this, this guy's wealthy. He said, put a robe on him, put a signet ring on him. Now, the signet ring meant when you wore that ring, you had everything of the father. If, I mean, it was like having the ATM card of your daddy. Come on, somebody. Ah, come on. I mean, you, you have the sick. Put the ring on him. Put the robe on him. He's going to walk now. Bless going in. Bless going out. Uh, get the finest. Uh, come on. We're going to have a T-bone. And we're going to have some steak tonight. Bring out the potatoes. We're going to have a party. Hallelujah. Amen. Now his brother, he, you know, he's all jealous about it. You know, that, now how, how, how can he be put right back into right standing when I've been good all this time? Well, probably you need to work on that pride issue. Because you probably haven't been perfect all this time. And why are you looking down on your brother? Why are you judging your brother? Why don't you love your brother and accept him back? You know, Christians are one of the only groups that shoot their wounded. Well, I don't like what they did. Marge, did you hear what they did? Oh, yes, I just told it. it, 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 it Phyllis. And, it, 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 I, you know. <laughs> and what do you do? You make that into a big gossip session. You know what you're supposed to do when, you're, when your uh, brother falls? You're supposed to pray for him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Oh. He, had a, he had a sinner, unworthy, slave mentality. Do you know the devil will always remind you of who you were? That's, that, that prodigal son... That, that's a great picture. The devil is the accuser. He'll always remind you of who you were. Let me tell you something. You are not who you were. You are a new creation in Christ, and His mercy is new every morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Hallelujah. You're righteous. Say, I'm righteous. You've been reconciled. You are righteous. You are the righteousness of of God in Christ Jesus. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Thank you, Lord. Awake to righteousness. <laughs> I like that. Wake up, you're righteous. That's, really, that's literally what it says. Wake up, you're righteous. Well, I don't feel righteous. I, you don't go by your feelings. You go by faith. Everything you receive by God is by faith. We receive righteousness by faith. Abraham got righteous. We, we, we learned this last week. Abraham received righteousness by faith. Everything that we have in God is by faith, but righteousness or right standing is by faith. And if the devil can keep getting in your ear and telling you how you're unworthy, he will steal that right standing from you. And let me tell you something. Not the fact that God has not, God will never stop the right standing but it will stop in you. You will think you're not in right standing. I'm unworthy. I've done wrong. Why would God bless me now? Because he loves you. In fact, he's not even looking at you on, on your sin. Matter of fact, when you sinned, he just saw the blood. When you sinned, he just saw the blood. Hallelujah. And the blood is on the mercy seat of heaven, still testifying that you're holy. And Jesus is holy. Amen. Why are you holy? Through Jesus. Now, holy, righteousness is who you are. You're in right standing. That's who you are. Holiness is what you do. You are holy because you have a new nature. You're not holy because you're trying to get to heaven. Well, if I'm just good enough, I'll get there. That, you know, that, that, most movies from Hollywood teach that lesson, uh, teach that about, well, you know, he, 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 he was a good person. He went to heaven. And you see that in Hollywood all the time. Some movie, uh, oh, he, he was a good person. That person was bad. They're going to hell. Well, 
what, what about the blood? What about Jesus? Did Jesus die in vain? Did Jesus, is it only because we did something good? No, it's because he did the final atonement. And it was not an atonement. It was a complete wipeout. He wiped out your sin. Hallelujah. It's done. I said, it's done. Amen. Hallelujah. Awake. Awake. Wake up. You're righteous. Wake up. Wake up. You're righteous. Wake up. <laughs> I don't feel righteous. You don't go by your feelings. You go by faith. Awake. Wake up. You're righteous. And sin not. You know, I like, I like Romans 6. It, it says, uh, you know, they come, to, they, come, <laughs> they come to Paul and they said, if it's by grace now, can we all sin? There's always somebody. <laughs> always somebody. I guess we can all sin now because it's by grace. Glory to God. And, and what does Paul say? God forbid. No, yield yourself over to righteousness. Right standing. What, what does it mean? It means that God's trying to get you to a point where you now are good, not because you're trying to get to heaven. You're good because you have a new nature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You have a new nature. Hallelujah. And how do, how do I walk in that new nature? You get in the Word, and the seed of that Word gets in you, and it changes you. You cannot change by the flesh. You can never be good enough. But the Word will change you. Hallelujah. Well, I don't need to go to church, and I can just live. Well, uh, are you getting in the Word? Well, a little bit. How many, how many know that you come to church not just for you, you come to church for one another? The Word of God says you come to lift up the faith or you're lifting up one another in the faith. Amen. We come together to encourage one another in faith. Amen. We need each other. That's why we're a family here. Hallelujah. What a good looking family. Hallelujah. Amen. But when you realize that, that we are... Look what it says. And sin not. No, we're not. We're, even though I, 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 I wake up, I'm righteous. Wake up. Amen. Time to get woke. I mean about righteousness. <laughs> Wake to righteousness. Amen. And sin not. In other words, it's not giving you license to sin. This is giving you license to win. For some have not the knowledge of God, and, and some don't understand any of these things. But wake up. You do. Wake up. You're righteous. Wake up. You're in right standing. You've been reconciled to the Father. What Adam did to... Uh, uh, what, death entered in through Adam, and, and that's spiritual death. Spiritual death is being separated from the Father. Jesus paid the price to reconcile you to the Father. It's done. Perfect. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> sow the Word. Don't sin anymore. Just sow the Word and reap the Word. Sow the Word. Reap. Don't sow the world. Sow the Word. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, <laughs> my, probably my favorite chapters. If you don't like Romans chapter 8, just leave right now. Now, <laughs> Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is so good. Man, it's, Romans chapter 8 is just off the... Hmm. Romans 8 just says it all and does it all and ends with a bang. <laughs> it's just so good. Now, Romans chapter 8, let's just start in verse 1. There is therefore now. Everybody say now. now. Do you know that now was one second ago? Oh, wait a minute. It's now again. Oops, it's now again. It's now again. Can we, can we move on? Now, there it is again. There is therefore now no condemnation. Now. And now. 
you get it. Anyway, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. There is no more condemnation. You're in right standing if you're in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now when that accuser of the brethren comes around and whispers in your ear that you're unworthy and blah, 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 blah. You know, sometimes people will get this way, you know, they'll, they'll well, you know, I've sinned, and, and uh, his mercies are new every morning, so uh, the rest of this day is going to be lousy. Tomorrow will be good. Well, <laughs> I'm telling you, people do some strange stuff. Now, if I look at three crosses and, uh, and I uh, hop on one leg, uh, uh, I can get myself back into right standing. No, you're going to fall over. Anyway, uh, well, if I do this or if I do that, you know, if, I, if I, I've got the... And, and it's almost like if, if, if I've got a rabbit's foot. I mean, you know, you don't need to add anything to the cross. And you don't have to wait for the next day. You are immediately right back into right standing. Whew. That's how much God loves you. God... God <laughs> You say, Lord, forgive me of that. He said, I did. He said, matter of fact, I did on the cross. It's already done. It's forgiven. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you forgave me. Oh, just wash me with that blood. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I feel so good. Oh, I feel that anointing rising back up in me. I'm getting bold again. I'm not going to let that junk that I just did. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get back. I'm not even going to go back to that filth. I'm not going to step back in at dung. I'm, not, I'm going to press forward towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let anything hold me down any further. I'm not, you know what the devil does? He trips you and then blames you for falling. And then God, like a good shepherd, picks you back up. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> there's no, therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And you understand this. In, in Romans chapter 6, he, he said, you know, God forbid, don't, don't sin anymore. That's not what grace is about. Grace is about empowering you so you can overcome sin, and God's going to be with you. And now you don't want to sin because now you're a child of the King. Now you've got His Word on this thing, and the Word is changing you. And your mind is being renewed by the reading of the Word, and, and you're beginning to know who you are. You're a new creation. You're not who you were. You are now a child of God. Hallelujah. And so now we're walking in Him. And, and uh, notice it says, Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We're, we're, not, we're not living according to the flesh anymore. We're, we're getting in the Word. We're getting, we're getting this Word. The Word is the Spirit. We're getting that Word. Now, and I want you to notice this. It says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. It made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm no longer under sin and I'm no longer separated. I'm reconciled. Hallelujah. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, hallelujah, on the cross. That the righteousness, everybody say righteousness. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Come on, hallelujah. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are now after the spirit, the things of the spirit. You're born again. What part of you is born again? Your spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So in other words, we've got to renew our mind by the reading of the Word. How many know the Spirit was sent so that the Holy Spirit was sent to teach us this Word? And as we get in the Word, the Word changes us and we're being conformed into the image of that which is perfect. Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and, and if, if, if you stay with a carnal mind, how many know carnal comes from the word meat? Mind? You're literally a meathead. Now, 
and you stay a meathead and you walk around like a meathead and you, and, and you go, well, I keep getting in the world and I keep getting this and, I, and, and, and you know, I got CNN running 24 hours a day, Joe, I can keep up. And you're surrounded with the world and you got the world and the world gets in you and you wonder why you're sinning. Guess what? If you're in the Word, you don't want to sin. You just don't want to. It, it, matter of fact, it, if you feel like sinning, turn on, you know, uh, uh, some good Christian music or a Christian preacher. We got a bunch of CDs and DVDs. We got a bunch of stuff online. You can just click right on that. You, you just can get right back. You can hear me say this preaching again in the middle of your sin. Hallelujah. But you can, you, can, you can get that word in you, and when you get the word in you, you don't want to sin. You don't want to sin. You only want to sin because you've got too much world in you. So if you start walking according to the Spirit, you start walking according to the word, you start getting that word in you, you start getting that life in you, you don't want to sin. You don't feel like it. You just want to please your Father. What a, you know a beautiful thing is when you see a sin, something that maybe temptation, you just say, now, I want to glorify my Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> he said, no, don't, don't be in that, don't be a meathead. Now, <laughs> carnally minded. What verse were we in? Six? What was that? Six? I'm looking up at six. Glory to God. I thought I was already past that. Anyway. So, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No, I had not known sin but by the law. The law showed us sin. For I had not known lust except the law had said you shall not covet. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of, of uh, concupiousness. Say that three times fast. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was or, uh, ordained to life, I found to be to death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death to me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not for what I would that I... You know, I'm back in chapter 7. <laughs> Let me explain why I went there. Everybody's facing them. It's because chapter 7 is right here next to chapter 8 on my page. Chapter 6, Paul said, we'll be editing this soon. Chapter 6, no, we won't edit it. Chapter 6, people said, can we sin now? Grace abound. We want to sin. Paul said, God forbid. Now, chapter 7, what I just read to you, Paul is saying, I cannot do this. The law, is, it, 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 it's too hard for me. I cannot not sin. That's what we just read. Aren't you glad we got to be able to do that? Now, chapter 8, where we're supposed to be, he gets a clue and he understands everything. He says, oh, there is now, therefore now, no condemnation. Are we up to speed? All right. Now, It's probably good I read that. Anyway, God wanted me to read that. <clears throat> Chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to, to be a meathead is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because 
The carnal mind is an enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. You're born again. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of right standing, righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also make alive your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit, the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You keep living in the, in the flesh and you don't receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you missed it. But you received this good news. All things have passed away. All. God has reconciled you to the Father. Now look what it says. For you have not received the spirit of, of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Daddy, Abba, Father. Come on, somebody. You have been adopted through this process of the cross, through faith, by grace, through faith, come on, that you would walk in Him, that now you are in the Spirit, and the Spirit's in you, and now you are a child of God. You weren't a child of God before then. Guess what? Once you're a child of God, you can be like the prodigal son, and he always says, come on, we're going to put the robe back on you, we're going to put a ring on you, get over here, you're back. Come on, glory to God. Amen. Now, do I personally believe you can get to a certain point in your life to deny Christ and, and, and uh, leave? I actually do. I actually believe that you can be turned over to a reprobate mind. How many know you got free will? God's not going to make you go to heaven. He's not going to make you be a son. But let me tell you something. You want to be a son? You're, you're a son. You're a daughter. That's it. You can cry out daddy. But if you get to a point in your life where you are so wicked, so twisted, reprobate mind, and you curse God, that's about the only way you can miss it. And that's because you by a free, how many of you it was free will to come to God? You have free will to leave. That prodigal son came back. But I want you to know, I don't think there's one person in this room who's ever going to get to that point. Because Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. And he's never going to let go of you. Amen. Hallelujah. So we, we, we've got eternal security in the fact that we're children and we've been reconciled or in right standing now and we ain't going anywhere. God, here we are. <laughs> Matter of fact, you're already seated in heavenly places. It's not some glad morning you find out. You already found out. You're a child of God. You're in. <laughs> You'll have to wait for some glad morning to enter some pearly gates and see if your name is in the book. If you're born again, your name is in the book. The angels have already rejoiced over you, and the Father says, welcome home. Come on. I'm going to end in, in, let's go down to verse 33. Hallelujah. Anybody get anything out of this this morning? Who shall lay anything, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? The born-again believers. It is God that justifies. That word justify, we learn, means make righteous. 
Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. He's still our advocate. He's still, he's still there. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? What's going to separate us? As it is written, for your sakes we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's Psalm 44, but that's not us. We're New Testament. We've got the blood of the cross. Yeah, they, they may have only been atoned for one year. We're atoned eternally. Now we're remitted of the sin completely forever and ever and ever. They're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. No! In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Come on, somebody. You are more than a conqueror. You are in right standing with God. God has made you sons and daughters. Hallelujah. You've been reconciled to the Father. That which Adam did, it's over. <laughs> Just as if Adam never sinned. The curse is over, and now you're in the blessing. And you're walking in the good news, and you're walking in the goodness of God, and God loves you. Come on. God loves you. Somebody say, God loves me. Say, Jesus took my punishment. Took the punishment of sin. I'm waking up. The righteousness. I am righteous by the blood of Jesus, making me more than a conqueror because he did it for me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him some praise. Hallelujah. He did it all for you. All your sins are under the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been reconciled. You can go before the throne room of grace. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing's stopping you from a great life. Your daddy, your daddy is wealthy. <laughs> and your daddy loves you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he's giving you the signet ring. He's giving you the ATM card. He's giving you something. Glory to God. Something good's about to come on the scene. Hallelujah. God's got something great with your name on it. Anybody need prayer this morning? Anybody need prayer? Right back here. Slip out. If you need prayer, just slip out. Form a line over here. If you need prayer, we're gonna we're gonna believe God. Amen. <clears throat> oh. oh. Lift up your hands to heaven. The glory of God is going right to that abscess, right there. There it is. Peace. Oh, there it goes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Move around. You feel any pain there now? Right there. So thank you, Lord. Take that away. There it goes. Now, it's in Jesus' name. There you go. Glory to God. There you go. More, more, more. Feel any pain there now? Just a little bit there? But thank you, Lord God. Completely. Jesus. There you go. Hallelujah. Feel any pain there now? It's much better. Much better. Mm -hmm. Much better. Well, just thank you, Lord. Just continue it, continue it, continue it, continue it. More, more, more. more. There it is. There it goes. There it goes. More, 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 more. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Behold. There you go. Move it around. It's tender, but a lot better. A lot better. <laughs> well, that that. Yeah, I couldn't even open it. Okay, I've got to get an implant. Well, Amen. I'm asking for two at a time. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Give it to her according to her faith. Yes. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. 
You feel that pain now? No, because they gave me some pain control. Okay. I just want the situation to be better. Yeah. And I don't know what to do. I've done everything I could with an acupuncturist. Sometimes we've got to turn that person over to Jesus. And when you say, I've done everything I know to do, Mm -hmm. well, now do what you do know to do. Turn that person over to Jesus. and, And he'll have his perfect work. He knows what to do. And then what you do, just love on her. That's it. I thank you, Lord God. Peace. I thank you for your wholeness, Lord. But more than that, I thank you for peace now in this whole situation. I thank you, Lord God, that that this is ah, going away in, in freedom and blessing and healing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now say, <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus, I put her, I put her at, your feet, at your feet, and I won't pick it back up. And I won't pick it back up. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, Hallelujah. glory, glory to God. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, when you have a situation where you put it at Jesus' feet and don't pick it back up, and if you do pick it up, immediately put it back down. 